Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hobbits. Today, looking at another beer that I picked up on Beer Dome, and this is a collab that sounds really cool. This is between an American brewery and a European brewery, and this is a collab between Perennial Artisan Ales in St. Louis, Missouri, and Brasserie de la Seine in Brussels, Belgium. So, if you do not know both of these breweries, they're very well renowned around the world. Perennial is very known for big beers in barrels, but they also make some really good session beers. Their pills, for example, is really good. But Brasserie de la Seine, to me, is a kind of modern icon, I guess, uh, because they haven't been around as long as some of the really traditional Belgian brewers, but they are just fantastic. I've reviewed a handful of their beers. I've been to the brewery twice, and whenever I'm there, I mean, I'll just... It's amazing. And drinking a lot of their beers, especially something like Fresh Taz Bulba or Cinebia or just some of their fun collaborations they do. They had one with Allagash, for example, a like funky wheat beer. I mean, they're just a really cool brewery. And um, they are one that I think some American brewers are really starting to pick up on. <laughs> and one of them apparently is perennial because it says here for their 10th anniversary, this is the second installment of their collaboration series, and it's conceived in a series of emails between uh, Yvonne uh, from, uh, from De La Seine and says new friend and idol. So I'm guessing, I don't know, new friend, maybe idol because they knew the brewery before, but it's one of these classic breweries that if you're ever in Brussels and you're there for Lambic, don't miss De La Seine. Don't miss De La Seine. If there's any other brewery to m visit other than the Lambic producers, De La Seine. Um, I'd r much rather sit and drink Delacen beers than go to some bar and drink Delirium. Because <laughs> a lot of Danish beer geeks, they go for the Delirium bars and the really classic big brewed Belgian beer. Although some of them, like the classic Trappist and whatnot, they, they are nice beers. But I just think, at least in the beer geekdom and geekery, sometimes Delacen gets overlooked. They are fantastic. Uh, but they came together, they brewed this collab, which is called Saison... De Reves, and I probably butcher that, but um, it's a interpretation of a Belgian style saison with artwork totally inspired by De La Seine, possibly done by their artist. I mean, it really looks like a can of De La Seine, which is usually in bottles. So they've really done what they can with this to try and replicate De La Seine process with this. So they tried to do a saison, or they brewed a saison that they used a lot of spelt in and then they hopped it and dry hopped it with Hülmelen from Germany. So they use a lot of noble hops at De La Seine in their beers. It's how it's heavily hopped with noble hops and it creates a very unique flavor and a beer that's just awesome and insanely drinkable. So with this one they also tried again to do what they do in at De La Seine is to naturally carbonate the beers in both kegs and cans. And at De La Seine, they do bottle carbonation, and I'm not sure if they also do keg carbonation, but they mix in sugar for, for the bottling. And they have a tank where there's sugar mixed into uh, the finished product. And then from there on, it's pr put into, or tapped into bottles and whatnot, so that it will referment in the bottle and you'll have the CO2. And that's also how they do like bread beers and stuff. They add the bread in this, I think it's in that vessel, and then the bottles uh, are carved with bread in them, and then they will evolve over time because they do a lot of beers with bread. And uh, most, as far as I know, is only the bottled beers that are with Brettanomyces. But awesome. Like if you've ever had some of their bread saisons, you want to saison van de Brugge, for example, or I actually have a bottle of that to review that I'm just aging a little bit. Or like their, uh, uh, what's it called? There's a Saison as well with the Kention Lambic in it, which is really good. They make a lot of stuff that is just awesome with, with bread and mices. Even a bread porter, something you'd ever hear of. But I'm looking forward to this one. Hülmelon is a pretty cool hop. They say themselves, <laughs> it's quite funny, they say it tastes like um, freshly cut grass after a light rain of cantaloupe chunks. <laughs> so, yeah playing on the fact that Hülmelen is supposed to have melony flavors. But let's check this one out. So Pour is a pin bright yellow color, lots of CO2, uh, and then a fluffy white head that's died down now. Uh, not hazy, but I'm pretty sure it will be if we pour the rest of the can into the glass because it's naturally carved in the can. 5.2% alcohol. And I think they brewed this this summer. 
Uh, but they gave it a fairly short shelf life, and I'm guessing that's because of natural CO2 in the cans, maybe. But yeah, it looks nice. Let's check out the aroma. And also, before I check out the aroma, a massive thanks to Beard Elm for this beer, because that's where I got it. So check them out. Link for this shop is down below. I could smell this already <laughs> now, but yeah, that is got Dillison written all over it. <laughs> Dilesen is so funny because it's a, one of those breweries that like it, it's it has its own style and that's so hard to come by these days. Like, there's a lot of breweries they take an inspiration. Like I think there is is it some beers? Oh, is it, there was some beers that are inspired by a lot of classic Belgian. So was the Ranke XX bitter was the inspiration for some I think other beers whatever. But but it's like you can you can smell when you're drinking a beer from Dilesen. It's like oh this could be a Dilesen beer. And this really smells a beer, like a beer where I'm thinking, this smells like a De La Seine beer. Like, it's dry, massive, like, Saison characteristics, but also massive amounts of hops. Um, totally cantaloupe. A little bit of a bubblegum kind of nuance as well. But really bright. And, like, really, really impressive smelling Saison. I wonder what yeast they use for this. Like, the character of the yeast is so impressive. It's so fruity and, and, and intense but also spicy, floral. There's like a bright, snappy green apple, almost like sour green apple. And then like the melon nuance, there's floral nuance, there's grassy nuance, there's peppery nuances. And then like a really nice, wheaty, fluffy, kind of wheat bready thing, but think like a little bit more rustic. So like a more rustic, darker kind of wheat bread. And I think that's because it's spelt. Spelt just like it tastes a lot like wheat, but it just like has a slight rustic, slightly grainy edge or something like that to it. This smells freaking wonderful. This smells so good and uh, really old money, <laughs> but with a new money twist. I mean, the cantaloupe melon kind of thing. I see it, and that is definitely a bit more modern. But I talked enough. Let's try it. Cheers. Thanks to Beard Over the Beer. That has so much Dillesen DNA. I think it's a little less bitter than Dillesen beers, but it's it's still quite a bitter saison. That is dope. <laughs> that is dope. This is really a brewer's kind of beer as well. Like if if you give this to a brewer who brews like a lot of hazies and stuff like that, like a lot of times when you go to festivals, a lot of the brewers they want to drink pilsners. If you gave this to a brewer, they'd be like, yes, especially also at the ABV, five point two percent. This is just knocking your face off with, that's a weird saying I just made up, but um, it's just like a smack to the face of flavor for the ABV. This with Brett, chef's kiss, um, that would be wonderful. Really nice cereal grain profile and sweeter maltiness. Definitely like this fluffy wheat bread, that's a bit more rustic. Uh, like a bit more just, it's hard to explain rustic, but it just feels a bit more like there's almost like if you could translate it into easier to understand words, like a, a bread where there's a little bit of a darker flour in it or something. So it seems a bit more rustic. Um, just because it doesn't taste dark, you know, but it's just, it it's tastes more complex than classic wheat, but it tastes a lot like classic wheat. Um, and then like usually spicy bitter profile, which is totally the Dillesen way, high carbonation, uh, quite clean like profile, like there's a lot of yeast characters and whatnot, but it's not like, it doesn't feel like dirty with like yeast or anything. It's just like really vibrant and like popping it in your face. I wish I could have shared some cans of this with my boss, Frederick, because he loves Dillesen and he would love this. Perennial, if you watch this, please do a Brett version of this. Um, but yeah, the uh, cantaloupe kind of flavor is there. It's floral, it's bitter, it's grassy. Uh, that snappy sour green apple also persists, which is really nice. There is a little bit of like a pink peppercorn type flavor. There's a little bit of like almost like the floral nuances you get of a Sichuan peppercorn or something without it being bitter and I think that's just crazy phenolics from yeast It's like the, like a plethora of peppercorn like a symphony of complex peppercorn flavor, which is really nice 
And it must be phenolics because I don't think your melon has a lot of that kind of character. I really just want to crush this. Like this is such an awesome beer. And it's a, totally a beer that I think is, like if, you're mo like if you really love modern craft beer, you might be put off a bit by this, but but like drink a few saisons, go through the classics, and then try this, and try some de la Seine, and I'm sure you'll love it with time. It it's also somewhat approachable, I think. I mean, the melon flavor there makes it more approachable. This is awesome. I love this. Um, I wish I had more. This is for me, ninety three, ninety four territory, like. This is making me think I need to drink more Saison and just like classic Saison without uh, bread or like wild bacteria and whatnot because it's really good and it's a really unique character and it's really drinkable and it comes in a low EBV package, which is also awesome. Like drinkability and sessionability in beer with lots of flavor is is just awesome and hard to do. <laughs> Heavily carved, <laughs> but it really suits it. Yeah. Yeah, I think a 93, 94, something like that. I fucking love this. And I did not expect to love it this much. This is uh, one of the coolest, like, American collaboration beers from the state, from, like, the states that I've had in a long time where it's a collab with a European brewery. Uh, just because, like, it's something you don't see that often. And it just also really nails the character of Dittasin. Again, drink this blind, you'd be like, oh, is this a Dittasin beer? Or maybe not blind. I'm not sure everyone would pick that up, but... It, there's just so much Dilatin DNA. So if you guys had a chance to try Saison de Reves from Perennial, let me know what you thought of it. I'm pretty sure this would still be available on Beardome because it's a Saison. <laughs> so people are going to be like, yeah, next. <laughs> this is, should sell out quickly in my mind because this is fantastic. So yeah, if you guys had this one, let me know what you thought of it. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about uh, videos and beer reviews, and I'm gonna say cheers and see you guys in another one of those beer reviews. Cheers.